Hey guys, Jennifer LeClaire here with you coming live from my house in South Florida. I've just returned from the United Kingdom, from London. I was in France. I was in Iceland. Actually, I just about broke my elbow in London. I sprained my ankle in France and I broke my toe in Iceland. So the enemy is mad, mad, mad and attacking, attacking, attacking. But guess what? I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still preaching the gospel. I'm still raising up watchmen, intercessors, prophets, and seers. I'm still going for it. And so should you. Listen, I want you to share share, share with all your friends this message. Whether you are in the United Kingdom, whether you are in Asia, whether you are in America, whether you are in Canada, whether you are in Australia, wherever you are in the world, I am trying desperately, somebody say desperately, to connect with watchmen, to connect with intercessors, prayer warriors, five-fold ministers, believers with a passion to see revival. I want to share with you for just a few minutes today what's on my heart. Now, I just came from London. We uh, did some uh, watchman training there, uh, behind the closed doors sorts of training with with, with the, the major prophets um, that I know of in London. I'm, I'm sure there's some that weren't there, couldn't be there, didn't know about the meeting, but there were about, I don't know, 30, a small group, and we just poured out all day. I poured out, they prayed, and then we went on before that. We were in Croydon. Uh, launching uh, the House of Prayer in Croydon. Then we went on to do a, a mentoring day with Dr. Sharon Stone there in Windsor. Then we went over to France and just had a rest day. Amen. We had some some uh, some almond croissants, praise God, and some very wee, tiny, itsy bitsy lattes. I like the ones in America better because they're bigger. Then we went over to Iceland where I prophesied and prayed and preached and did deliverance on uh, former drug addicts. Thirteen people got saved. It was an amazing night. Then we did a, 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 another meeting there and activated people in the prophetic. So revival is on my mind, but it's going to take the watchman. It's going to take the intercessors. It's going to take the prayer warriors, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the believers who are fully equipped and on fire with a fervent spirit, not lagging behind God, but running in lockstep with him to do what he has said to do. Listen, I'm convinced if we would all do what God told us to do, we would be in revival now. now I want to share with you a few things I shared in London just quickly. We know that in London, in, in the UK, in Great Britain, uh, it's it's a it's a critical time because of Brexit. We saw the news; things have been delayed until June. Uh, there will be a Brexit, uh, but it's going to be in June. And what's fascinating to me about that is that Dr. Sharon Stone had prophesied. We were just speaking on the phone on yesterday. She prophesied that this that, that it would uh, come forth in June, uh, that there would be a rebirth rather of a nation in June, and so this new deadline is June. And so we're expecting a rebirth. Can a nation be born again in a day? Isaiah asked in scripture. And the answer is yes and amen. And so it's a critical time in the United Kingdom. It's a critical time in parts of Asia. It's a critical time right now in New Zealand. We do have two uh, awakening prayer hubs there in New Zealand, one just minutes away uh, from the region where the bombs went off. We're facilitating prayer in the nations. Uh, but there is a critical time in the whole world right now. So this is why I'm saying wherever you are in the world, listen up. I'm especially trying to reach right now those who are in the United Kingdom, uh, those who are in within uh, the ability to get to the United Kingdom, because I'm going to be going in every month until the Lord says stop. OK, and I want to send a special message to you today, although this does apply to everyone. I'm specifically targeting you. Uh, many of you don't know I'm actually 97% British by DNA, actually 98%, forgive me, 98% UK by DNA, over 70% British, uh, a little bit of uh, Irish, a little bit of Scottish, a little bit of Swedish uh, over there. And so my heart is there in London for many years. And I saw when I was there, so many people feeling like there's a, a hopelessness. It just, it looks hopeless in many ways. The population of antichrist uh, endeavors is rising. Uh, the population of uh, unbelievers is rising. Uh, but we know here in Job 14, seven through nine, and this is what I want to give you hope in. Listen, there's a, listen, there's a root of awakening. 
in the United Kingdom. There's a root of awakening. Great Britain did more to advance the gospel uh, into nations around the world than any other nation has. And there's a root of awakening there. There is, you know, the, the, some of the greatest uh, ministers who have ever walked the face of the earth rose up and went to and fro from Great Britain. And so we see there is a root of awakening. And even though it looks in some ways hopeless, even though the doom and gloom prophets in the media are cursing uh, Britain. They're saying, well, you're going to fall apart. Your nation will collapse. All the doom and gloom prophets and all of the secular media, they're mad and they're cursing the nation. Listen, I know what that's like because we experienced uh, something very similar in America, in the U.S., in the States. And I was very vocal about this, about awakening in America, about awakening in North America, about a great awakening, a third great awakening. My heart is for awakening and revival so that the church can rise up and go grab the harvest, bring in the harvest. Amen. And so we see here that in America, uh, everyone was cursing, cursing, cursing. America is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, they were saying things of this nature. And we got to a a very critical time in America. You'll remember we were just facing potentially a, a deep, fast slide into isms uh, that are ungodly. Uh, we were about to elect uh, the first female president, which would be wonderful to have a, a first female president, just as it was wonderful to have a first African American president, right? But if you have the wrong one in, this, in the White House, it, it, it ripples and it, you know, the anointing comes from the head. And so when you have someone in the White House who is ungodly, unrighteous, uh, uh, wicked, uh, when you have people that are in positions of heads of state that are uh, on the wrong side of God, it releases hell and it unleashes hell in a nation. And then when you have uh, the prophets who are supposed to be speaking the word of the Lord, when you have the, the prophets cursing the nation on top of it, you end up in crisis. When you have the watchmen growing weary because hope deferred makes the heart sick, you have a nation in crisis. When you you see the intercessors beginning to faint and grow weary in well-doing because they're not seeing prayer answers, you have a nation in crisis. When you see the apostles building platforms to preach and gain money instead of raising disciples and planting churches and discipling nations, you see a nation in crisis. So what happened when America was in crisis, the intercessors got a fresh wind and began to push and push and push pray until something happens, began to push again, and we saw the election of Donald Trump. Now, I'm not for or against anybody. Uh, I am for the Lord, and it looks to me like our nation, based on the economy, based on the job numbers, based on the freedom of speech, based on our embassy being uh, put into Jerusalem, uh, based on uh, the anti-abortion laws going into effect, based on a lot of things, it appears to me, whether you like Donald Trump or not, that our nation is shifting into the right direction. This year, bless God, we were actually allowed to say Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays without worrying about getting kicked out of a store or otherwise persecuted. Companies don't have to hide these things anymore under this administration. And so now you see that, the, that, that Britain is in crisis. Great Britain is in crisis. The Brexit, there's doom and gloom. Many of the intercessors are pressing in, but some are weary. Some are fainting. Some are breathless. Some of the watchmen, they're, they're, they're looking out, but they're only seeing so far in the spirit because no one is there to encourage them. And they're seeing everything the enemy wants to show them, but they're not always seeing what is behind the enemy attack. In other words, the other side, the hope, the breakthrough. For whenever there's an enemy attack, it is to prevent your breakthrough, to stop you from going forward, to hinder your momentum, to to stop you, to keep you, to, to, to get you to retreat and to give up. And I'm here to tell you today, there's a root of awakening in England. There's a root of awakening in Great Britain. There's a revival that's going to sweep across the United Kingdom. I'm telling you, across Europe, I know it looks dark. I've put my foot into many nations there. I'm in Germany and there's so much fear that is still there. I'm in Iceland and there's so much oppression that is still there. I was in France and there's just chaos that was there. The Lord told me France on fire when I stepped into the nation. He said, France on fire. I said, 
what does that mean? Well, I'm pressing into that. There's a good side and a bad side, and I'll share that at another time. But there's revival that wants to sweep through Europe, awaken Europe, awaken Europe, awaken Europe. Let me read the scripture. Job 14, verses 7 through 9. For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again and that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its root may grow old in the earth and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. I'm telling you there's a root of awakening, there's a root of revival in the UK, and it all it might look dead, it might look like there's strife and issues in the churches, it might look one way, but you've got to look beyond how it looks in the natural and look to the way Jesus Christ. There's a destiny on your nation. I'm laboring in love so that the goat and the sheep nations, yes, will be they will be separated. There will be goat nations. There are are going to be sheep nations. I believe Great Britain is a sheep nation. I believe the seeds that you've sown in throughout the, the world are going to sprout up as a revival, a harvest of revival. And I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I want to encourage you today. And that is why I'm coming once a month. That is why I'm coming as a labor of love on faith once a month. I have the word of the Lord. I have elders around me who have been commissioned to help me, to pray for me, to open doors for me that I cannot open. It's called divine connections. God is paving the way for me to go into London each and every month until my mission there is accomplished. I want you to do this. If you're watching me and you're in the UK, or if you're anywhere in the world and you want to stay connected, get on my mailing list because I'm going to be doing a, a, a webinar on the Watchmen. And I want you to, it's not out, it's not ready. I don't know exactly when I'm going to do it, but I want you to be able to find out about it when it comes out. Because what we need, you know, Chuck Pierce, when he was just in London a few months ago, he began to call forth the Watchmen and the women. And so one of my mandates in the UK, in London, in Great Britain is to call forth and activate the watchmen, to raise up and send out the prophets, to cause the seers to soar with new dimensions in the spirit. And so I want you to connect with me. I, I don't know when the webinar will come out, but it's coming soon. I want to tell you that I will be there. You can come see me in person. I will be in South London. It's on my Eventbrite page. I will be in Windsor. It is on my Eventbrite page. I'm also doing a School of Prophets and Seers in South London. It is on my Eventbrite page. My Eventbrite page is Jennifer. I'm sorry, Jennifer Leclaire dot eventbrite.com j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r-l-e-c-l-a-i-r-e dot eventbrite.com you can look there in the notes uh, for this broadcast and find the url i want you to know that i am committed to London. I am committed to Britain. I am committed to the UK. God has sent me and he's mantled me. He's commissioning me. He's anointed me. It's not about me. It's about what he's doing through me and I'm submitting. Believe me, it's not convenient to go to London once a month with everything else in the world that we have going on. But we're launching Awakening House of Prayer South London. We're launching Awakening House of Prayer Windsor about an hour and a half apart and I need you London. I need you UK to get on board. Lord. I need you to come and pray with me. I need you to allow me to pour into you. I need you to allow me to help you, to partner with you in this great task called turnaround, called pressing into awakening. I want to help you. Will you let me help you today? I don't know where else you are in the world. These things apply to you too. Maybe I'm not coming to your country once a month yet, but if you want to stay connected, please get on my mailing list. My website is Jennifer LeClaire dot org. Amen. God is good. One more thing I'll say. UK, 
I need partners. I need financial partners to help to fund this. I'm not uh, having anybody bring me. I don't have anybody paying for the tickets or the hotels or the Ubers or the trains or the taxis or the undergrounds. Uh, I don't have anybody paying for all that. It's not underwritten. Will you consider UK, London, partnering with me in this endeavor? I know that you will. Pray about it. If you want to become a partner today in this mission, you can go to jenniferleclair.org slash give. JenniferLeClaire.org slash give. When you become a partner, you'll receive a monthly resource from me just to bless you back. Listen, I want to pray for Great Britain right now in the UK. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to stand with your people in Great Britain, God. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to raise up facility, uh, uh, intercessors and watchmen and prophets and seers, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up this great United Kingdom to you, God, and I ask you, Lord, to bless it indeed. God, I ask you, Lord, I stand and I break every curse spoken over this these nations in the UK. I break word curses now in Jesus' name. I break the doom and the gloom words from the second media in the name of Jesus and I say all of Europe shall be saved I say there's a harvest and we're going after it I say we're going to equip the Saints for the work of the ministry in London and beyond and I thank you Lord that you bless all those under the sound of my voice Lord prick their hearts to do what you've called them to do for their nation for their city and for their household God strengthen them resource them connect them in the name of Jesus God would you help us today to see a nation born again in a day. Lord, help us to labor over these next few months to push and press and prophesy until we see your will come to pass in Britain in the name of Jesus. God, not our will, but your will be done in the name of the Lord. God, would you help us today to do our part so that you can be released to do your part. Oh God, we think sometimes we're waiting on you when in reality you're waiting on on us. So Father, help me as I go and bring those in my path who are serious about revival and awakening, not just looking for a platform to pray, but looking to build a platform that will go into the nations of the earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ once again. We give you praise and honor and glory, God, because you are good. Your mercies endure forever. Listen, I love you guys. Please get connected with me. Please get the word out. We're going to pray. We're going to turn this thing around. I don't have all the answers, but God has given me a key. I say that with all humility. It's not easy. The warfare is great. But the Lord sang over me when I was in London, and he, sang, he sung this song. He said, it's going to be worth it. Is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it all. When my elbow was busted and my ankle was sprained and my toe was broken, he was singing, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it all. Intercessors, watchmen, prophets, seers, apostles, it's going to be worth it. Stand with me. Please let me help you. I'll be there in April. I'll see you soon. God bless you.